harvest gets underway in Nebraska, ahead on NTV's Grow. Strong soybean yields give farmers some optimism in an otherwise dismal year. And our market analysts will stop by to help us make sense of the grain markets. Plus more on Con Agra's move and the local connection to central Nebraska agriculture history. Then we'll meet our family farmer of the month doing his part to be the voice of agriculture. Get ready to grow. Harvest is underway, and while we can't control the grain markets, some say soybean numbers look as good as ever. That's our top story. The combines are rolling. It's harvest time in Nebraska. It's been a while waiting, rain, everything else. The growing season comes to a close similar to how it started. But as long as rains hold off, farmers like Andy Smith are getting to work harvesting soybeans. Now we're kind of getting a little bit more moisture than we need when we're wanting to harvest, but some of the soybeans we've been in, I would definitely say it's a bean year. Many farmers tell us soybeans in particular look good. We're seeing some numbers, you know, some full fields that are averaging way more than we ever thought. Farmers say it's good to see production up, especially with prices so low. It's all about yield this year, and the more you can, the more you can drag out of her, the better off you're going to be right now. Farm income is expected to drop 45 percent this year. Farmers like Smith say it pays to pinch pennies, especially with costly inputs like chemicals and water. Well, you got to be about as conservative as you can get. That's the key thing right now. Things are going to be. I'm hoping for a turnaround. Soybean harvest is ahead of last year's pace and progress on track with the five-year average. Corn harvest will be coming next. And despite the financial outlook, farmers say they can't help but be optimistic. This is what the entire year leads up to. Because this is our one shot to, to make a difference. You know, this is, this is when our bread and butter comes in. And as you rev up the combine, we can all do our part to keep this harvest a safe one. The Nebraska State Patrol encourages all motorists to exercise caution and increase awareness on rural roads. Egg implement drivers may drive on the shoulder when available and should display slow moving vehicle warning triangles and use their flashing caution lights. When turning left, be aware of vehicles attempting to pass. Soybean harvest gains momentum but has been slowed by recent rains. Seed corn harvest is also well underway. Dry conditions in the west allowed winter wheat seeding to progress as well. According to the latest USDA reports, the vast majority of corn is in good to excellent condition. 10% of corn has been harvested at last count. Sorghum harvest has yet to really get started, and as we would expect, it's soybeans where the most progress has been made with quite a bit of field work just in the last week. And there are still millions of bushels of old crop corn in the bin. As of September 1st, the most recent government count, old crop corn amounted to 182 million bushels in Nebraska, up 29% from 2014. Of that total, 51 million bushels are stored on farms. Old crop soybean numbers are also higher than they were a year ago. We want to see your harvest update, so get out your phone, turn that camera on while you're in the combine or following along in the tractor. Even if you're unloading at the bin or just helping around on the farm, shoot us a brief video and tell us how harvest conditions look and give a shout out to your family and harvest crew. Send videos of 30 seconds or less, email them to grow at nebraska.tv and of course you can always share them on Facebook and Twitter and you might just see yourself on a future episode of Grow. A fear felt by state leaders, now reality, as a major Fortune 500 company leaves Omaha for Chicago. ConAgra made the announcement this past week that they are leaving Nebraska and headed to Chicago. That reorganization is expected to cost more than a thousand jobs based here in Nebraska. 
And while Omaha feels the sting, Grand Island has actually been there too. A piece of that ConAgra history dates right back here to central Nebraska. Long before Chef Boyardee, Jiffy Pop, and Manwich, ConAgra was in the grain milling business. The Fortune 500 company got its start in central Nebraska. The history lives on at the Glade Mill at Sturm Museum, which represents an industry that dates back to the years following the Civil War. Mills turned farmers' grain into livestock feed and packages of flour. It was started here in Grand Island. That mill continued to grow here in town, got bigger. The, the capacity got larger. The Henry Glade Roller Mill Company got larger at, at one point. They were milling 22.5 hours a day, almost 24 hours a day. The Glade Milling Company continued to grow after World War I. Owners of mills in Hastings, Ravenna, and St. Edward joined forces with the Glade Mill in Grand Island. And decided to take their mills and come together and they formed Nebraska Consolidated, which was a group of flour mills. Um, then you look into the 20s and um, you saw that the offices that had been in Grand Island and been through a couple modernizations actually then moved to Omaha. So the con in ConAgra reflects the consolidation of the milling business in central Nebraska. And while the headquarters moved from Grand Island to Omaha in 1922, the company maintained a mill in GI until the 70s. ConAgra was later in the meatpacking business and once owned the plant that is now JBS Swift. There were several mills in Grand Island over the years, all since torn down. Stir Museum has a replica built in 1999, thanks in part to donations from ConAgra. A lawsuit over irrigation waters moves forward. A group of Nebraska farmers who say their crops suffered because the state improperly deprived them of irrigation water from the Republican River can now proceed with their lawsuit. Attorney Dave Domina represents the group of about 150 farmers and said a district judge rejected the state's motion to dismiss the case. Egg leaders meet to discuss ways to protect Nebraska's natural resources. Leaders from natural resources districts met in Kearney this past week. One big change this year, an alliance between the Niobrara River districts and the Game and Parks Commission, an agreement more than eight years in the making. I, I guess Mark Twain probably said it best when whiskey's for drinking, water's for a fight, and everyone cares about water and everyone has their own thoughts on the best way to manage water from now into the future. Representatives from the Platte, Elkhorn, Blue, and Republican Rivers also spoke at that NRD conference in Kearney. Hog numbers are up here in Nebraska. As of September 1st, the latest government snapshot shows a 3% increase in hog numbers from a year ago. USDA reports 3.2 million head of hogs. Breeding inventory is up 5% from a year ago. Nebraska hog producers intend to farrow 175,000 sows between September and November, down 3% from the actual farrowings during the same period a year ago. A big virus that killed millions of piglets is now being traced back to reusable tote bags used in international trade. The bags carry up to 3,000 pounds of bulk items from foreign countries, including soybeans, pet food, and feed, and often were not cleaned between uses. The USDA said the porcine epidemic virus matched one that broke out in China the year before. New policies have since changed how animal feed products are handled. Research is underway to improve the health of chickens. In an effort to reduce the need for antibiotics, here's more from the USDA. USDA Agricultural Research Service scientist Dr. Hyun Lilihoi is looking for innovative ways to keep poultry healthy worldwide. There has been concern that increasing use of antibiotics has promoted increasing incidence of uh, drug-resistant superbugs. Dr. Lillahoy says those superbugs can affect livestock and humans. So she is working to enhance poultry's natural immune system. We try to make them innately strong so they can resist infectious disease better. That way we can reduce the use of antibiotics. And the farmers need something to replace the growth promoting properties of these antibiotics. And that is where our research in finding alternatives to antibiotics is becoming very critical. 
Illahoy's research involves changing what poultry eat. To find dietary alternatives that we have shown that promote the growth, promote the animal health, and actually they can really increase the innate immune response of poultry. Lillahoy was recently nominated for the 2015 Service to America Medal for her research. In Beltsville, Maryland, for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, I'm Bob Ellison. More developments on the horizon for sorghum as the University of Nebraska takes the lead in biofuels research. Most U.S. biofuels currently are made from corn, but sorghum varieties create more biomass for cellulosic ethanol. That makes it a top contender to replace corn and relieve pressure on an important global food source. Researchers will investigate sorghum genetics as well as the soil microbes that interact with the plants. Geneticists will search for sorghum varieties with an efficient use of water and nitrogen. Together, the team will experiment to find the combinations with the greatest productivity benefits. Here in Nebraska, we have the longest running agricultural youth institute in the country, and now they're taking that to some non-traditional kids. Many Omaha area high school students may not see themselves as having a career in agriculture. However, around 150 students recently attended NAYI Omaha. It's a spinoff of the long running Nebraska Agricultural Youth Institute, an annual summer event that typically attracts farm kids who are leaders in 4-H and FFA. This was a little different, a one day event in Omaha to give kids a new career outlook. It was done in conjunction with the Exarban Stock Show and Rodeo. State Ag Director Greg Ibaugh said it's a way to stop the brain drain and attract young people to careers that are egg related. Making sense of the grain markets, our analyst stops by next. And still to come, we meet a farmer giving a voice on some important local policy decisions. Stay with us.